Panel and thanks for joining us. We saw, uh, I saw this panel. I was really looking forward to it on the big phone home event last week, which I thought that's a cool event. Glad to see it. But I was really waiting to see this group um, get together. And then it spent 10 minutes talking about uh, technical issues and there were some introductions and that was it. And then you were gone. So I thought it might be worthwhile to reassemble most of the group and uh, to get your take on some recent events that we've all been following very closely. In particular, we can start with, I think, the images that Jeremy and I have released over the last couple of weeks. Uh, as you know, I mean, they started on Mystery Wire and on, on Extraordinary Beliefs, and now they've gone all over the world on major newscasts, a lot of debate on Twitter and Facebook and other social media platforms about the legitimacy of the uh, images how they were acquired, uh, questions uh, about what they actually show, whether it's you know CGI or some kind of fake or some kind of an effect of infrared technology uh, that gone askew. And I just really, really like to get your take on the events of the last two weeks, the images that you saw, sort of what you felt the first time you saw them, and then questions that you had. Ryan, UFO Jesus, we we didn't get to hear hardly anything of you. You didn't you didn't speak any of the gospel during that event over the weekend. Let's start with you. What did you think about when you see the, saw these images come out? I thought it was amazing. You know, I looked at um, Jeremy Corbell's website. He did a whole briefing exactly how you acquired it, how long you sat on this information. I mean, it, it's clear to me you guys you guys were methodical in vetting this information, and I. I was at a loss as to why everyone was so upset that you released this information. I think it benefits us all. And Jeremy Corbell s said multiple times, hey, I'm putting it out there. You, you can do your own FOIAs. You can do your own um, detective work and see if it's real. I mean, you guys laid it on the line and I think it's compelling. And, and I, the provenance is extremely impressive. This is not grandma or grandpa in the backyard. This is the United States Navy. Uh, image, images and, and video from the United States Navy. And um, I think uh, from here, we're just gonna collectively look deeper into this. Maybe maybe some new witnesses will come forward and I think it's great. And uh, th this is a wonderful time to be immersed in this subject for sure. Yeah, it's amazing I mean, how much is leaking out, being released, being confirmed. Um, I never thought I would see it, that's for sure. Um, Joe, UFO Joe, why don't we go to you? You're the first time you saw those images. Did you think this can't be real? No, I didn't think this can't be real, but I, I, I immediately, I immediately read the article and the background. So you guys did the vetting. So I was comfortable that they were actual, you know, what you guys were saying they are as far as whether or not they were UAP and whether or not they were used in a briefing. And you know, I had my own information that confirmed that or just back that up. So I didn't expect to see people saying, you know, it's just out of focus Boca, which I, you know, I work in television, I shoot video. I've never heard of Boca because in video, you just say, you know, throw the background out of focus, open up your iris and it's just depth of field. Boca I had never heard of. So I think it's just a still photography issue. But, you know, people are coming to the conclusion. I, I understand skepticism, but saying this is a joke. This is, it's an out of focus plane, helicopter or drones. and. Maybe, maybe, but it made it all the way up to the UAP task force. It's being used in briefings. You know, I have the same information. People are above that. People, it's not just them. There's people around them that are saying these are UAP. So it's not, you know, if those people got it wrong, we're in major trouble. Jeremy was saying the other day, we're in major trouble if they can't, you know, determine if something's a plane. And I could see if it was just one video and like, okay, but the background is, it's in, a, it's in a classified report. That's a big deal. And Danny, um, I guess a lot of the criticism that's popped up on, on um, Twitter in particular, UFO Twitter, basically would have to assume that the U.S. Navy are a bunch of idiots for, this, for them to see Boca and then pass it up their chain of command and, um, and tell their bosses, who then tell their bosses that it's real, as part of that briefing, I mean, they'd all have to be idiots to accept this. That was the idea that was put forward, um, you know, even by some journalists. However, I think that's few and far in between. I'm not too worried about what uh, UFO Twitter is saying or a, a small percentage of UFO Twitter. I'm looking at the big picture and what we were talking about ever since, you know, the um, task force uh, wording was in the, uh, was in the act 
uh, and the bill was that we were worried about the, or we were concerned and um, excited about the promotional run up to this report. And that's exactly what's been happening. It feels like we're in a heavyweight fight and the uh, fighter we're rooting for is just throwing body punches and head punches because we had Ratcliffe um, speak out and that went viral around the world basically. Then we had your pictures come out, that went viral. Then we had Jeremy follow that up with the triangle video. Plus we have Lou consistently working. He just did that presser. And we have your interviews with Harry Reid. So this is what we wanted. And you know we've, we're seeing the mainstream media guys that aren't always involved and they're very involved right now. So we're, basically everything we've been hoping for has been happening with this run up to the task force coming out. And um, I'm just really, really impressed with uh, how many mainstream journalists are taking this extremely seriously. I don't think they're listening to this Boca stuff um, as much as we are because we're kind of immersed in, in, in uh, social media and battling guys. But um, I think the big picture, everything is going great. And I'm really amazed at how well it's doing. And I'm very, very excited for the task force report, no matter what it holds, whether it's a dud or not, I think this is great movement. And um, it, I think even if they drop a little uh, report now and then there's something again in the future, whatever happens, this is good stuff. Um, I am concerned about some of the Goff um, comments, but that's kind of status quo. That's what we've been getting from her over the past few years about Lou. But we know what's true. We know what Lou did. And um, they're not gonna be able to kind of thwart uh, what we know is true. And if they, whatever they throw at Lou, we're going to be able to throw them back at them. And um, Lou isn't going anywhere and the subject isn't going anywhere. And that's why there's a task force. And Jeremy, I mean, the, the idea that major media, I mean, this has gone all over the world and you've been the face of this on Australian TV, UK TV, US TV, all over the place, newspapers, and probably you could do a lot more if you didn't have to sleep at all. Um, you can do a lot more media. That's the that's a really important development. I mean, it's it seems like it was more media coverage for this wave, almost than Tic Tac. I, I can't really make the comparison fairly, but it, it almost seems that way, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, certainly. We, we all lived through that and you and I very closely. This is the greatest amount of attention that has come to the Evo topic in a long time. And it's a cumulative thing that has occurred because of these unsolicited statements by people in positions to know it's a culmination effect building up to and then all of a sudden, wow, we have new imagery, but I want to back up a second here. Um, you don't hang your hat on a single video or piece of evidence for something that is historic and global and has and temporal. It's been with us since as far as recorded human history. So the idea that you know some backyard uh, internet warrior can uh, replicate kind of poorly what you're seeing in like a video that was released. You know, by the way, confirmed Navy, and by the way, by a Viper team, not even a Snoopy team. And let's talk about that difference you have to really stop for a second and say, what is evidence to me? Is evidence like one video? Is it two videos? Like at what point does the evidence become heavy? So I never say one video is gonna prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, everything we ever wanted to know about UFOs, but cumulatively, and what has happened with the amplification process of what we released is so powerful for the UFO topic for the mystery, for the question, how do you identify an unidentified with less information than the professionals who were tasked and came up with unidentified? The answer is, honestly, you can't do it honestly. So these ideas that debunkers are, you can tell it's personal. You can tell that it's um, all sorts of other things other than reality that is making people get so quickly to assumptions and quickly to their conclusions. And I can make something kind of look like something else. So believe me, because don't trust authority, but you know, I'm an authority. So trust me that it, everything is a contradiction. Down is up and up is down. This is Alice in Wonderland at this point. So, so let me just get back to the basics, George. What did we release? You released three images that had never been before seen by the world. Those three had never been before seen by the world out of an F-A-18 cockpit, a fighter plane. 
the WSO, the WISO, and the backseater took those images and you released the exact timestamps, the exact times, the minutes between them, three objects. Oh, these also happen to be part of classified briefings where they use the unclassified photos to demonstrate, not an illusion of the UFO phenomenon, to illustrate to professionals in the intelligence community and our armed services, what UFOs do, what they look like, what you should observe. So, so this is like amazing to me. It's being, that's just the first three photos. And then I was able to release, obtain and release with you, George, right? As you know, it's like, I'm telling you, not just a video so far, but six or actually seven more stills if you've been paying attention. So three from the night vision on the USS Russell stills in an unclassified aspect of a classified briefing, three from the Omaha, a USO, something that was spherical, larger than six feet in mass, that went into the water without destruction and was actually looked for by a sub. Then we release a video. So now you've got all these pieces of evidence. So if we're talking about like lens flares or weather balloons, or if we're talking about swamp gas or brine shrimp, okay, what are we talking about? We're talking about new evidence, new evidence from the United States military that is included in classified briefings, but is not classified itself inherently to educate the intelligence communities and armed services on the mystery of UFOs. So I just wanted to take a big step back there, what we released and guess what? This is just the beginning. You know, the, the key uh, with all the debate that's gone on, on on various social media about what it might be, for me, it boils down to, we're not saying what it is. We don't know what it is. Nobody knows what it is. I mean, the images off of Oceana, those three photos, I, they don't look like the Starship Enterprise. They don't look like, uh, you know, Bob Lazar's sport model. They look pretty pedestrian and mundane. But the reason, and, and I was surprised when I first saw them, I thought, eh, well, you know, what the heck are those? We don't, we don't really know. And the guys who, the people who shared them with me said, well, it looks like they're some kind of drones or something. We don't know what they are. In the two year interim, after I got those, the, the first image and then some follow-up images, they had done some analysis. They had some sensor data. They figured out what the weather was like up at the, at the, the level where those things were sitting and they were just sitting there. And this is the same area where the cubes with uh, the circles inside have been sitting and they were classified as unidentified. We know for sure that these images came from the UAP task force report. They have delivered those briefings to joint chiefs, to Congress, to the intelligence community, to private defense contractors. And they say they're unidentified with all of the information that they had, sensor data that allowed the pilots to find them and photograph them sensor data that suggested how long they were sitting there in these high winds, they're unidentified. We don't know what they are. Same thing with your images. We're not claiming they're ETs, as many have suggested, just saying that they're unidentified. And it, it does get a little bit frustrating to, to see people ascribe claims to us about what we've said on those images when, when we have not. You know. That's why I like this, this panel. I, I do respect, um, although we have our differences, all of us, I, I do respect the contributions that um, you know Ryan and Joe and Danny have made to this field where a lot of people just sit back and they're passive consumers of information and then they're, judge, they're judges of that information uh, with incomplete understanding, like amazingly incomplete understanding, like people who are pillars of the UFO community have said, oh, Jeremy, like, you know, amped up something too much at hold. I don't know if I could say it, hold up <laughs> because everything I said, I gave you the ability to prove or disprove it. So it is frustrating, but the people that we have here, I, I, I guess I just want you to know, I, even though we might not agree on everything, thank God we don't. Um, I respect that you are taking a proactive approach in each of your own ways to contribute to the general knowledge base and understanding and unraveling of this UFO mystery. And you each have different kind of skill sets in doing it. And man, if everybody took a, an active participatory role, we would get, and not everybody's got to get along. I don't believe in the kumbaya thing. 
But if everyone took an active participatory role, we would be much farther along today. Danny, we uh, we interviewed you about the Silver Records story last year, last summer, about the USS Kidd incident. Um, you know, it's an unknown, right? Whatever it was that was swarming the ship, it's unknown. I, I think maybe those were the ones that looked like little mini Tic Tacs. Is that right? Or do, do we know? That's what the um, source claimed, that he saw a Tic Tac. You know, at the time, we, it was um, only one source. And I was going off of uh, Dave Beatty's great work. Um, he was telling me that we needed to be very careful with this because we just didn't know. And I, we wanted to put it out there um, be, for this exact thing to happen because then everyone went crazy with the FOIAs. The War Zone did a great article on it and added to it. You guys have now added to it more than I could ever even have hoped for. And we now we know it's this huge event with um, multiple people seeing these things, multiple sensors, and it's just taken a whole life of its own. So I can't believe something that um, you know I blogged about a year ago has turned into this, gone viral around the world, and been a, a major media um, event. Um, back to the uh, what you guys have put out in some of your criticism on social media. Sometimes I'm wondering now because you guys have been around for a while, yourself and Jeremy George, and you guys have done a lot of great work. Unfortunately, a lot of people hold some stories that you've released against you and they take it personally and they've done it for years and they're just so dug in. So now I'm wondering, do these people not like you guys more than they like disclosure? Are they really disclosure advocates or are they trying to just kind of burn everything that George and Jeremy put forth and they don't actually care about the UFO truth anymore? So that, that scares me and I'm, I'm seeing that and I'm seeing this ego stuff and I just, I really, really hope that that's not the case. There's, there's a person who did amazing work on updating us on the 180 day report. Well, now they have a, uh, something tweet, a tweet pinned to their Twitter saying, just so the major media knows, George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell, they promoted a fraud in Bob Lazar. And basically they're trying to tell the, ma the mainstream media, do not listen to this other story they're working on because they worked on a story with Lazar. It's really, really bad. Um, Tyler Rogaway did an amazing article, but in that article, he said the three pictures of the UAP from the F-18 balloons, he said the cylindrical object that apparently went underwater is a balloon, which they couldn't find. Um, so that's frustrating. I mean, I read his article. I've read his other, other articles. Great work. Um, Lou Elizondo did a French podcast, and I'm going I'm to quote what he said. You guys, you guys, Jeremy and George, you may be able to explain why he said this, probably because he can't comment on a classified report but what he said is what has not been provided yet was a context in which the information that information he was asked about the pyramid that information was being used and what these objects are but according to the classified report we do know what it's being used for he probably just can't say that well that's true i mean you know lou has always walked that line uh i don't think he would acknowledge something that was obtained from a classified report He's got his own battles right now um, with personnel who are at the Pentagon who have always had it out for him and have always, well, we, we've all seen it in the last couple of weeks. Again, he didn't work for ATIP. You know, I, I halfway expect to see them say ATIP didn't study UFOs all over again. They can't seem to make up their mind about Lou or the program. And they certainly don't want to mention the program that came before, which was OSAP. So, you know, I, I suspect that we're going to continue to get obfuscation from a uh, Pentagon spokesperson, and she's the the only belly button through which we get any information at all uh, on an official basis. I do know that I was absolutely astounded that she confirmed that the images were recorded by Navy personnel. She didn't have to do that. I, I, uh, I, I'm flabbergasted that she did, and I'm, I know Jeremy was too. I want to add to what Joe said regarding the balloon that submerged into the water. If I'm not mistaken, the chief of naval operations, uh, Michael Gilday, was asked, are, are these identified? And I do think, although I'm not 100% certain that what happened with the spherical objects submerging happened during this event series in J July of, of 2019. Well, if Michael Gilday is saying they're unidentified, then how can anyone say with authority that it was a balloon when, when the very chief of naval operations is telling us they don't know what it is. And furthermore, we, we don't have a full 
understanding of the sensor systems at the disposal of the United States Navy. We only know what they tell us. And that's true for uh, Rogaway as well. And I read his article and I thought it was amazing. And even though he leans towards this being Chinese and Russian technology, he still makes an, a superb case for bolstering a permanent uh, program to study UFOs and not just a task force, a, a fusion cell so that all of the information goes into one place. But I just wanted to underscore that you, none of us can say with any degree of confidence what these are unless we know the full potential and capabilities of the US Navy. Much of it is probably highly classified. So they may have a level of fidelity well beyond our imagination and they may know exactly what these are not. They may know with absolute certainty that they are not Russian and they are not Chinese uh, uh, machines. So I just wanna throw that out there. We can, however, see desperate attempts to identify an unidentified with prosaic bullshit. We can, we can see that. So I would argue that although we can't say what it is, some of the explanations that are being given, we can easily dismiss them. So as information comes in, we're gonna learn more. But for example, I think it is widely underreported what I released in the images of the USS Omaha. That footage is from the Sapphire system on the USS Omaha. The Sapphire system is a FLIR based system. It's a thermal system. And as we know, and we have all learned together, knowing about thermal systems now because of the Tic Tac, the Go Fast, and also the gimbal, we can kind of look at those and understand them a little better now, right? We know what we're looking at as a culture of people interested in this. That object was indeed spherical. And in fact, the body of that object was at least six feet in diameter, if not larger. So you have to start to ask yourself the questions. Okay, we can get rid of the balloon idea, but let's, like, let's go into like drones. Like, where did it come from? Where did it go? Why couldn't they retrieve it? Why was it low observability at some times? How is it able to go on and off radar with, and maybe uh, I won't say at this time, but uh, multiple other objects on screen at one time, which we'll get into that evidence will come out to people. M my point being really simple. We do have the ability to call bullshit on people that are obviously trying to misuse the public trust by explaining away something that they have very little information about. You know, it was interesting. So Danny writes about the USS Kid. It gets swarmed by these unknown objects. Some have described them as tic-tac shaped. We know that the Omaha had multiple objects basically in the same time period within a couple of days of these six foot wide spheres. And I think we will learn that there was many, not just one. We know that the uh, USS Russell had this pyramid stuff, and you can argue all day about Boca or not, but they, these were seen. Uh, these things were seen. So different objects on different warships all at the same time. It makes me wonder if there is a, a new level of sort of a performance art by whoever is sending them. Are the Chinese sending all these different shaped uh, objects to buzz our warships? And, and if so, how, how did they do that? How did they get to these warships with their incredible sensor capabilities without being detected until they're there? And then you can't track them once they leave. Uh, it's as Marco Rubio has said, I kind of hope it's ET or somewhere else and not our, our earthly adversaries because if China or Russia have this, we're screwed. Um, I'd like each of you to, to, to share with the idea of whether or not you think that this is these recent sightings, well, recent 2019, are the result of our increased uh, sensor capabilities or whether they really do represent an increase of demonstrations by whoever is flying them. Uh, uh, UFO Jesus, Ryan, what do you think? Well, I think that at the end of the day, the, the phenomenon are the architects of the secrecy. And they're the ones that really control 
the, the level and degree to which this infiltrates into our civilization. I mean, that's speculation on my part, but I, I think there's some evidence to back that up. Um, so I think that it could go either way. It might be sensor systems are getting better, or it could be uh, that there's, there's a more of an influx of this presence allowing itself to be seen, or it could, frankly, it could be a combination of the two. Um, but, but, but that I would also say that as our sensor systems keep getting better in space, underwater, on F-18s, on our, our warships, the US government simply cannot maintain the status quo because as these sensor systems uh, get exposed to more military personnel and they start seeing these things more regularly and more people see it, you cannot shut everybody up. So maybe one of the reasons, and then this has been this has been hypothesized. One of the reasons we're getting more transparency from the government is because they know at the rate technology is progressing, it, not only in the military sphere but also the pri the private sphere. This is just going to come out organically. So the government has to make a determination: do they want to get ahead of this, or do they or do they want to look really bad? And, and I, the last thing I want to say is, if you look into the de deck logs from the from this event series, some of the people were saying that there was like a white light and in another case of a blinking red light. So let me ask you all a question. If this is a Chinese or Russian drone, wouldn't they want to be as covert as humanly possible? Wouldn't you want to, to, to blend in as much as you possibly could? Why is there a white light or a blinking red light if you're doing a covert operation? So yes, I'm highly, uh, uh, I think that there's a good chance these may not be Chinese or Russian, it might be something more extraordinary. And that's all I have to say. Joe, you were able to confirm through your own means uh, some information about those Oceana, the three photos. And they were odd, but they weren't like ET looking craft. They, they were just odd, but you were able to confirm they, they really are something unknown. There they are right in the flight path of where these F-18s fly every single day. And it's been going on, at least what I've been told, at least through 2014. Pilots seeing these things, they don't always want to admit that they see them. They don't report it necessarily because they th still think there might be uh, problems for their career. But they keep seeing these things in the same airspace every day or at least every week. And the skeptics would say, well, the person you're talking with who said, you know, they've been confirmed to be unknowns doesn't know what they're talking about. That's that's basically that's one of the, the issues. People saying the UAP task force is so small. They don't know what they're talking about. Everything Elizondo, it's, it's over his head. It's, it's above his knowledge base. As far as like different shapes, you know, if you read Keel, if you read Eric Davis, if you read Valet, the phenomenon can take any if it's unknown, truly unknown. The phenomenon can take any shape it wants. It can come as a balloon from the 1800s, you know, the, the big airships, it could be a saucer, it could be a gigantic triangle. If, if this is a true unknown related to the phenomena, that's what it could be. It could take any, any shape it wants. And, you know, I hope, I hope it's nudging us. You know, here we are, tell the America, tell the world that you're not alone. That's what I hope for. The problem is, if that's the case, there may be something going on in this planet you know, whether it's natural, you know, whether it's climate change, which Elizondo speaks about, that we need to act quickly. Maybe these things, if they share the same space as us, they know we need to wake up and start taking action. So on a negative, it's not really negative, but there could be something really bad going on on this planet. And these things are trying to nudge us into opening up, you know, maybe we'll get some more technology if we could admit that these things are here. You know, I'm totally speculating on that, but... <laughs> You know, that's that's where I am right now. That's one of the theories that people have talked about. And the other thing, um, people are thinking that this stuff was released on purpose. So a month from now, they could say, guys, that was a balloon. You guys are idiots. What kind of, you, you got in, people interested in balloons and you guys don't know what you're talking about. And then everybody's going to forget about UFOs and it's all over. I don't see that happening. I just, that massive plan, I, I just can't see them pulling that off. Matt, let's uh, let's get you involved in this. We haven't heard from you yet. Uh, so you you monitor this social media reactions to the story. Uh, you know what we put out. You, you know how our audience, in general, liked it. Everybody but UFO world. It was uh, it's pretty hilarious, but I think it's kind of what we expected. I don't think it. I don't think any of us were shocked by it. Um, 
I, I think you guys have covered it pretty well. There's, you can poke holes in this stuff and you can, you can say all these things, but you're coming with no information. You have no background information. You haven't vetted this. You haven't spoken with the people. I mean, there are obviously, there are people that you and Jeremy have spoken with off the record. Everyone's disappointed in that. They want to know who your, who your sources are. Well, they want more information. They're not going to find out who your sources are because that's going to be a problem. So if they can't accept that and they can't accept for things on face value, then you can only explain things so many times. You know, the idea of confidential sources, it, it kind of comes with the territory when you're dealing with sensitive topics. It just does. Ideally, we'd be able to all tell where we get all of our information. But I can tell you over the long run, I mean, sometimes you have to keep the, the sources private if you want to get more information. If our job is to maximize the flow of information to the public, it's a compromise you have to make. And, you know, we, Jeremy and I worked out a way where we had double checks independent people to confirm the information so it wasn't just all coming from one place in fact it's coming from multiple places uh you know uh, danny the whole idea of drone so you start out with a story about the uss kid the term drone is used it's been you know it's been used in these uh ship logs reports for uh, the other ships that were engulfed in pretty much the same time period that were buzzed by whatever these things were that, I mean, drone is a legitimate term. It could be drone, but it doesn't necessarily mean our drones or what you would normally call drones. I mean, it's a pretty flexible term, right? Of course, and it's, it's a placeholder. Plus, I think a lot of these young sailors, they're not thinking UFO, they're not thinking UAP. They're gonna put drone right away. They see something in the sky, they're gonna write it off as a drone that's Chinese or Russia. And there are drones flying around, you know, in the ocean, they're messing with us. So it's hard and, um, you know, uh, but we get the uh, observables and other things like that, and we they rule it out after they investigate it, and then they realize that maybe these aren't actually drones. But you know we have to kind of separate the two, and um, drones are going to be exceedingly a problem uh, going into the future for our armed services and just for the UFO community. It already is when we have uh, civilians trying to um, see lights in the sky and figure out is that you know some sort of UFO or is it a drone? We're in a lot of trouble in that regard because there are so many drones in the sky. It's going to be continuously harder. Um, I just, I'm so happy that we get to see something that the government was interested in. And that's what baffles me about the UFO. Uh, and it's not the UFO community. It's a small percentage of the UFO community that are, that are naysaying. But, you know, we got to see what they were interested in, what they were looking into that possibly could be UAP. That's huge. That's amazing for me. That's what I want at the end of the day is just to get a glimpse of that. And that's what um, we, you guys provided. So I, it's just really hard for me to understand that someone could be not happy about that, especially when everyone is focused on the task force and the report and what could be in it and how they look at things. So we get to uh, get some of an idea of what they do. Jeremy, the, the idea of drones. OK, so we know that drones exist. We know that other countries have them. We have them. Um, one crashed into a ship yesterday, I guess. There was a story about it. Um, but we also have anti-drone technology. So I don't know how far you can go along these lines. You and I have discussed it before, but when these ships that we're talking about were buzzed in July 2019, was anti-drone technology employed? And did it work? Or can you say? Um, I can repeat what Lou Elizondo said. And he said that drones are not a problem for us. And I can confirm that, that we have technologies that are new, that can absolutely, they're, they're drone destroyers. It's no problem for us. So I don't need to say anything for myself. I think we should listen to Lou. Lou has a little more credibility in that field. Um, I'll be blunt and you can edit or bleep or cut me out if you want, but um, the drone designation is total bullshit. It, it's a catch-all phase. Uh, it's a catch-all phrase. Um, and, and in fact, George, you are aware that, that you and I would know some of the individuals who gave them the designations. And, and there's a sense of failure on their part because that's just something you say because it's the closest thing at that moment that, that you can say. And it also it helps people just move along and keep going. So. I think that's really important that I'm clear if I wasn't clear what I thought of the drone theory. Now, second of all, uh, again, you can uh, 
you know, cut this out if you don't think it's wise for me to say, but George, you are aware that I could have released with you multiple angles of the same video, multiple angles of the same images, meaning wherever those images were, however they were obtained, it's not one person. It's not like some deep throat. This is like something that over a long time we went through, we confirmed and got much of the visual data. So different angles, I don't wanna be, I wanna be careful with what I'm saying there, different versions of the same thing. So that's something people should know if they're thinking like there's just somebody from the UAPTF giving you or me information, that's wrong. Nice try, move on. And now I just also wanna to touch upon the human intelligence side of what you said. You can sit behind a keyboard and you can look at a video and you could tell me everything that you think about that video. It will never be as good as speaking with the individual that filmed it. It will never be as good as talking with the crews of people that dealt with it in the moment, actual intelligence, where it was their job and they were trained to deal with this. So the idea of human intelligence, oh, by the way, Jeremy, release everything you got or you're just as bad as the government. You too, George. Yeah, UFO Jesus, you find something out, you drop it tomorrow or off with your head. You know, look, the whole idea is that we pace ourselves, that we check and double check and triple check and quadruple check our work and that we allow something to be valuable based upon the merit of the evidence itself, but also the origin of that evidence. And you will learn that there are people you can trust that are accurate, that are factual, and uh, to go beyond and above to not report something until they're ready, like the U.S.'s Omaha date. That was said in the briefings. It was said to me. However, sorry, it wasn't said to me. It was said in the briefings, the classified briefings. It was conveyed to me. However, I held that back because I know human beings make mistakes, you know? So I wanted to make sure. And guess what? I didn't just tell you the date. I'm not talking about 11.01 p.m. that the object went into the water. I'm talking at 11 p.m. to the minute. So I'm giving you, and George and I have given you, such specific details. I guess I'm talking to everybody in there who's saying stuff. We've given you such specific information. You don't need to trust us, although we have earned your trust over time. You don't need to. I gave you enough information to go check on yourself. Every single media organization on this planet, if they're worth their salt, they have liaisons and people that can check inside classified systems, give them, I can't confirm nor deny, or maybe something better. So there you go. You've got it. Do what you want. The, um, the pyramids, the flying triangles, pyramids. Um, there's one of them, the one that's closest, that's 700 feet above the USS Russell. Yes. Confirmed is flashing. Yes. And there's been a lot of speculation about what that means. I, I, I'd like to hear from everybody about what, what, what they think it might mean. It's uh, synchronous with uh, aviation warning lights. Therefore, it must be ours. I don't know how aviation warning lights could flash on Boca um, images, but um, that's what's been suggested. So maybe you could start with that, Jeremy, and then we'll go around the horn. Yeah, no, I, I'd love to hear, I, I would like to contribute with what I know after I hear with what people think, because, okay. I, you know, of course you can make anything, anything that's spherical, you can make look like a circle if you're just looking at it two dimensionally. So I would love to hear what you guys think. And then I'll tell you what I know. Ryan, you want to start with the, the flashing triangle pyramids? Sure. So may, maybe there is a, a light on that, on that vehicle if it's a vehicle and maybe it does line up with commercial planes, but that's all it would tell us. That doesn't, that doesn't reveal what it is. Um, the fact of the matter is that, you know, it's like Seth Shostak. He's very fond of saying, well, why would UFOs be interested in military? Like, why? Like, I don't know if I went to another planet, I'd be fascinated with, with their civilization's military. So we can't, we can't really make these kind of assumptions about unknowns. It's, it's, it sounds logical at first glance, but if you really think more deeply, we don't know what this other would do. So the fact that there could be a flashing light that, that is synchronous with, with warning lights on planes doesn't prove anything other than it's synchronous with 
warning lights on other planes. That's if that's if that's the case, because you guys have gone over and said it could be because of the infrared camera, it could be a, something from a helicopter flashing onto the triangle or the, the pyramid itself. And uh, that, that's really all I have to say about that. I mean, and if you look at the historical record of UFOs, it, it has been witnessed before that they sometimes do have flashing lights on them. Yes, flashing lights can mean a plane, but it doesn't definitely mean a plane. And, and the last thing I'm going to say is let's not lose sight of the fact that this is the United States Navy, okay? They have multiple uh, sensor collecting mechanisms, multiple radars, multiple videos, satellites, okay? So they're not going to be like, oh, it's flashing, there's a plane. No, they're going to be like, oh, it's flashing. That's interesting. Now let's look at our satellite data. Let's look at the multiple video uh, captures we have. Look, let's look at the full array. That's how they're going to come to their conclusion. So the whole flashing, people are hanging their hat on the flashing light. I think it's ridiculous. That's all I got to say. Joe, flashing lights bother you? It definitely bothered me when I first saw it. Um, there's somebody on a private Facebook group that measured the lights and the regular aviation lights are, are not random. They cannot be random. They have to be specific. Somebody measured the lights from the pyramid triangle and said they are random and it's very, very slight. So they're not done with their report yet. Um, another troubling thing, somebody privately told me that the flashing light was the refresh rate of the night vision camera, which I don't really know night vision cameras, but I do know refresh rates and it, that that didn't strike me as being accurate. So I don't know. And I really don't know. But back to what Ryan said, the Navy, I'm thinking the Navy is looking at this too. So if it made it as high as we, we've heard it made, they have to have ruled that out. But once again, we're, we're battling the this stuff was released on purpose. They're going to pull the rug out from out from, from under us in a couple of months. So we, we got to hear more. We, we need to hear more, obviously. I, I want to hear more. Um, Jeremy said multiple angles. I know what you mean, but other people are going to say, so other sailors on the ship shot the object from multiple angles, but I know that's not what you mean. But that's, you know, you might want to clarify. So let me, let me clarify. Do you think I should that. clarify is what you're saying? I, I think people are going to assume that multi, you have okay, multiple. Um, yes. Well, that Joe, I'm not saying that's not the case either, just to be clear with you. That okay. may very well be the case. Inside of the May 1st, 2020, ONI UAPTF report that is on SIPR and Intel Link and other Intel Link systems, to be specific, you will notice three images. And then there is also a video. This report is not just a piece of paper. It's a presentation. There's a narrator. So in this report, you'd get these three images. Now you tell me if those images match up to the video I gave you. No, when, I said, when I said there were um, multiple angles, what I mean is, and I don't know, George, if I should get too into this. So you guys have the ability to cut if you think I should be cut. Yeah, I, you, I think you probably should tread lightly here, but I mean, okay. I don't want to be mysterious or something. It's just, you, you've made some promises to how it was going to come out. So um, no, no, no. I'm talking. What I'm talking about is about um, when I say Joe, and thanks for making me clarify, Joe. When I say there's like multiple angles, what I mean is, if people are paying attention, they'd have to understand that to capture this footage, there's a few ways to do it. One way would be to film your screen if you have access to a terminal. So let's say multiple people filmed their screens and anonymously sent me the same stuff. That would be considered multiple angles in my point of view uh, uh, of the same thing. I am not saying that there aren't, there isn't more footage. I'm not saying that, that, that there isn't more footage. I'm just clarifying for you that when someone is leaking something to a journalist where that journalist obtains and releases it, whatever, if they're coming in anonymously from multiple people, you'd get like the same thing, but it would look kind of different depending on how they captured it to you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. So um, then George, I'd like to just kind of go a little bit further and just say that I think people realized with that fourth photo that I released that that was of significance to me, that was a way to make sure that people understood 
that it wasn't just like I was handed a slide. I, I don't want to go further with that at this time, but you understand uh, the basics of what I'm saying. Well, let's go back to the flashing pyramid. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll bring Danny into that conversation too. If it is in fact confirmed, and I believe it is, that that object was 700 feet above the USS Russell, the chances of it being an airplane and the Navy guys recording an infrared video of an airplane and then sending it to their commanding officer and then sending it to up the chain, including the UAP task force, and then reporting that in, in a document, in a presentation, to the Joint Chief of Staff, somebody's going to be in big trouble for that. If, if that's an airplane that's 700 feet above the USS Russell and they're reporting it as a triangle, you know. I would think so. I would think they'd be in a lot of trouble. And that's what I'm interested in is the government side of this stuff. I'm not qualified to look at the videos and say, what is it flashing? Is it a reflection or is it actually flashing? I stay out of that. What I really look at is what the government is doing with it, how they feel about it, what lengths are they going to vet this kind of thing? And you know, if they did um, misidentify a plane, you would think they would have looked at you know the uh, flight tracking and things like that. But if they did, that is a huge story, and they're making very very big mistakes. So that's a huge story in itself. But you would think that it just couldn't happen with the lengths that they've taken to actually uh, vet this kind of thing. But I, I'm just interested in what the in the, what the government is looking at, and luckily that's what we get a glimpse of. And that's what's so amazing to me is that we actually get to see what they're interested in. Jeremy, do we know for sure that that object was 700 feet above the ship? Yeah, I'm certain on that information. And I want to clarify it wasn't an object. If you look at the slide, it says three triangular shaped objects from the angle of observation. I didn't pull the word pyramid out of the ether. That was how it was described as conveyed to me in the intelligence briefings that have been widely distributed to titans of industry as well as in the intelligence communities. They made a great distinction as it was conveyed to me that in these briefings, that these were not known black projects, that these were not triangular shaped stealth craft, that these were not triangle shaped, that because of the angle of observation, they appeared triangular, that they were pyramids. Additionally, there are three right in front of your eyes in that video. Let's not bypass that. There are more actually, but I'm gonna just stand by three because that's what the briefing said. And that's what you can clearly see with your own eyes. Now, as far as the blinking goes, and I don't wanna get into the whole, hey guys, let me explain to you that when you get these standard issue, military issue that they already come with a cap and the cap circular, and it's really rare that you have like a piece of crap tape that you put into a triangle just so you can put it out of focus and film through it. Oh, but the clouds are in focus. And, you know, so is the antenna, by the way, if you can see that in the video. I'm not even going to go down that route. Oh, and by the way, how it darkens everything at night when you put a cap on it. And so it looks very different if you've got any brains in your head. Not even going to go through any of that. Instead, what I'm going to talk about is that on these images that we see, it bothered me probably more than anybody else that the thing was blinking. So I took a lot of time to get opinions from people whose opinions matter. And I found out that there's a lot of speculation on it. Some people say, I think the object was blinking itself. Other people say that on destroyers, by the way, something a lot of people don't know, there's a task light. It's a red strobe. Just like an anti-sub you know, warfare operations, they got like an amber strobe. Like all the lights have to be different and distinguished so that they don't get confused. So on the destroyer, you got a red strobe. Um, also, there is a helicopter pad on that really kind of stealth, uh, interesting, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna go too far into that because I don't wanna misspeak because that's what everybody's hoping for. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for light to reflect off of a surface and because you're amplifying or you're, sorry, receiving better that light in your night vision, that it could be a blink from that. I am not discounting that whatever this thing was, was strobing, that's possible, but something you should see with your own eyes. The other two- Were not. They were not. I mean, who has nobody mentioned this or am I just totally out of the Twitter universe because I don't pick it up because it's like evil poison every time I touch it. You could add to that that if you're looking at um, um, 
some sort of aircraft lights that that's 700 feet above you with night vision goggles it's going to overwhelm the night vision it's not just it's not just going to be a, a little blink it's going to overwhelm them if you've played with night vision much you'll know that a bright light shining directly into them pretty much shuts them down jeremy can you speak to witnesses that have seen these two not only on the night vision but maybe just looking up or anything like that uh, can I talk about the Omaha instead of the Russell so I can avoid that question about the Russell until I've like, you know, quadruple checked certain facts? Sure. Yeah, I'm just interested in like some of these other observations on any of the ships and um, any of uh, other people seeing it or other angles or anything like that. It's really interesting. I'd say look at what you've already been given for the Russell. I think there's more information there than people are understanding. And then I also think that... Um, you've got a great likelihood of learning more about the USS Russell. I'm as interested in uh, as you, you know, I, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I can't answer certain things, you know. Um, I'm as interested in you and I don't hang my hat on one UFO aspect, but just the fact this is in the chain of command. So here's the way it was described to me. Danny, I can give you something. Here's the way it was described to me. If I were to ask somebody who is in position not only to know, but position to directly act upon whatever was going on at that time, I would say, what would the likelihood be to you that this made its way all the way up to the chain of command to be put into this briefing that I told you the date for and the name for and all that stuff, bypassing any of the normal protocols to get there that some idiot with an unfocused thing that was messing around or wanted to joke, what's the likelihood, you know, one being, um, you know, unlikely and, uh, you know, 10 being likely, what's the likelihood that it would get there? Is it a, is it a 10? Could that happen? The answer was, I, I can't, like, absolutely not. It, it, that's a, it doesn't work that way, was actually the words that, that was said. You know, people would be in trouble. You, you don't, you can't do that. You don't just go and create data, get it passed up, get it put into documents, then have it put in a classified document if there wasn't a precedent and an understanding of the chain of knowledge of that. So it's kind of like Occam's razor. I love Dave Foley says this. He's like, Occam's razor does not mean that the most boring explanation is true. Occam's razor is what's most likely. Now, is it more likely that there is all of these breaches of intelligence and like drones invading from China and Russia out to and out perform everything we got and it makes all the way up into the chain of command to that gets to this point. Or is it just more likely that everybody that's saying they saw what they saw or the video shows you what it shows you, which is Occam's razor. And, and I would argue that our intelligence is strong. You know, that these are, you're seeing what, what it is. And, 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 you know, let's see. I, you know, I could be wrong. I'm wrong almost every day if you ask my wife. I, I mean, some of the, go ahead. I think, I think some of the skepticism is when January came and the, the head of the UAP task force was unexpectedly replaced. So, so now people are paranoid, but this, this happened way before that. So I think a lot of it's coming from that. They heard Mr. Bigelow say he thinks they're going to cut the legs out from the report. And George, you were worried. And privately, I heard that you know, there were people that were really surprised that they happened. They were totally taken aback, not expecting it. So we're dealing with that too. But like I said, this happened before. I don't think they've been nefariously trying to undermine the UFO community for all this time. And um, yeah, we need, and we need to see the, you know, you talk about witnesses and everything, but we don't have any of that yet. So, right. I understand yeah, some skepticism, enough. but some people are going just way too far right now. But, but there's a difference between being skeptical. Like, that's what people don't understand. Yeah, I, I am probably more skeptical than you, man. You know, it's like how much I had to do to get to the point to say what I'm saying right now. So no, it's Joe, like, Jeremy, you believe in Bob Lazar. You have no skepticism. That's what people yeah. are saying. That's yeah, what okay. Saying. No, but that, and they're holding it against you and George. That's okay. what's happening. You know, a lot of people just don't like that. That's such a lightning rod topic. Thank it's God really it's such a small amount of the human population because there's such a larger amount of the human population that understand that they should keep an open mind about yeah. stories like that. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised that there is more to come about Bob Lazar, by the way. So we'll just we'll just put that one on the side for a moment. Oh, great. That's uh, a great you know, though, I remember the reports about uh, the UAP task force because I was really upset when I saw it. I was really encouraged through most of 2020 about the progress that was being made, 
the bill passes, the job is assigned uh, to the DOD, and then in January, suddenly this information comes forward. But part of the reason for Matt and I doing that story was to draw some attention to it so that Congress would be made aware that their mandate to the DOD had been, in effect, kneecapped. And I would just posit this, is that that story had a good effect. Um, okay, so it, it helped in, in making sure that, uh, that, that the, the report proceeded. Uh, and I, I wouldn't be surprised that at least a version of it appears on time by that deadline. It might be the preliminary report, as Lou suggested, but even no matter what is in it, as Danny had said earlier, no matter what is in it, just the fact that it exists and it is presented to Congress is a monumentally important uh, development, I think, in the history of this phenomenon. I want to touch about one other thing while we still have you here, and that is the, the shock that hit me when the DOD confirmed those images. I mean, I, I, Matt, we'll start with you, but I mean, you and I, I remember we saw it, uh, we were a little bit giddy. Holy crap, this is amazing. And then it was almost kind of scary because you know where UFO Twitter is going to go. Well, clearly, DOD, uh, the Susan Go, these she's working with Jeremy and George and Matt uh, in the release of this stuff. It's obviously been released to them for some nefarious purpose. That's why they're confirming it. You remember that, Matt? That that moment? Yeah, it was a it was a little bit unreal, especially because of all the all the releases that have come previously, denying things or you know the releases about Lou not working at ATIP, and and then this comes out, and it's like what? Like this is coming from the Pentagon and, and it does, it kind of gives you a little bit of pause. It's like, okay, well, how much should we read into exactly what they said and um, <clears throat> maybe read a little bit in between the lines and, you know, definitely makes you a little more curious about uh, why they would come out so quickly like that. Ryan, were you suspicious? I mean, yeah, I was suspicious, but trying to, read season uh susan go in the in 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 the department of defense and how they relate to ufos it's like re reading tea leaves it's just something that i really don't partake in too much because they, they've been so unpredictable they've flip-flopped on so many aspects of of does uh, a tip study ufos what's lou elizondo's involvement in a tip and it's just I, I don't know what they're doing i don't understand their seeming incompetence so i just let other people uh, uh give their opinion on that because i'm kind of i've lost to be quite frank Joe, your reaction when you saw it. Yeah, I was definitely, I was wondering why she would say that and then not say UAP. But one of the great things is yesterday she told, I don't know if it was directly to Gotti Schwartz from NBC News, but she said, Luis Elizondo had no responsibilities. I don't forget, I forget the exact wording. Basically he had nothing to do with ATIP. And then Senator Harry Reid writes the letter and Gotti Schwartz tweets that. So that's good for him, somebody at the network level to see what we have to deal with. And Susan Goff, I don't know if she's, you know, I, I, I assume she's taking direction from somebody on what to say. Um, today, somebody, so I never know what to believe from her. Uh, today, somebody said, well, if, if Susan Goff didn't confirm that Senator Reid wrote to William Lynn, then we would have never known that that was an actual letter. We would have assumed it was a hoax. Or we would have thought it was a hoax or that Reid never sent it. It's like, well, George Knapp put it out. You don't think George Knapp, George Knapp, you know, verifies the information before he puts it out. So, She's a, she's an interesting person. I'll say that. And, and Lou has gone a lot further. I won't repeat it, but he was pretty harsh on her uh, on a recent show he was on. So who knows? And Danny, you, you've been a Susan observer for a while. I mean, were you surprised that she confirmed it? I mean, it would have been just as easy for her to deny it or ignore the question, not respond at all. It is weird that she didn't um, ignore it. I guess maybe she was backed into a corner and had to. I have my own personal theories about some of the things she said about Lou. You know, if you can consider ATIP, and, and this is speculation, and I could be totally wrong, but if you could consider ATIP more bootstrap or more a portfolio than a program, then maybe that legally gives her um, a reason to be able to say he didn't have responsibilities because it wasn't an official program in her vernacular. So I, I speculate sometimes on maybe she's gotten legal recourse to be able to say that, and that's why she's able to basically fib or spin or even lie um, some of those things. And we've seen the other emails where they're kind of corralling information amongst themselves and they're trying to kind of spin it in their own way and, and put it out um, to not make us think certain things about the UAP subject. Now, of course, that's concerning. 
maybe it's status quo and how it goes behind the scenes, but it's still very concerning. So the only thing I can think of with this is that they were either trying to be honest or they were backed into a corner so badly that they basically had to admit it. So it's just, it shows how great the work is and what you guys uh, put forth that they had to admit it. It looks like they always do a little hair splitting when they say this about Lou. He had no responsibilities for ATIP under the veneer of OUSDI or whatever it is. I can't remember which one. They flip, flip it around, which may have been true because it was under somebody else. But uh, Jeremy, uh, yeah. you're, you were excited but also disturbed when that statement came out, right? Oh, yeah. I think I found out exactly why the statement came out the way it did. But first, I just want to say one thing. I guess you can't win, like, <laughs> ever. I guess you can't win, like, ever. Um, what I'd like to say is that I believe, in fact, I know that the Pentagon didn't have all the information that the journalists did have. And so that could be a particular reason why you can't comment on certain things. And I know that for a fact. It's hard to understand and wrap your head around that, but it's something we'll talk about later, I'm sure. All right, guys, thank you all. Matt, did you want anything else? Anyone, any last thoughts before we wrap it up? I'd love to hear these guys give a rant at the end. Just each of you, just tell me what you think about UFOs and why you're obsessed with it, you freaks. But the, the most exciting thing that happened today is I, I saw the interview with Lou where he talks about people with knowledge of a crash retrieval before Roswell, which I didn't know. And he said they may come out and tell some anecdotal information. So that's, that's really exciting. And of course, people are already ripping apart his words, but what else is new? Danny? I'm super excited about the subject. I'm just really excited about what's going on. There, there's obvious um, goals within the government. Of course, the government isn't one thing. Some people are for the subject and some people are against it. The people that are against it are really seeming to sweat right now. And they're taking shots at everything. They're taking shots at Lou. Um, and it's like all of us have, you know, bullseyes on our backs right now coming for this. And the more mass media that uh, reports on this, um, up, up to the UAP ETF report, is just, it's going to get worse. It's going to get better and it's going to get worse. So I think we need to kind of be aware of that moving forward. And people like Lou, people like you, George, you're really putting it all out there um, and you're, you're, you're sacrificing things. And um, poor Lou is over here get, taking just shots and punches every day. And I think it's just really going to get worse for him. I'm expecting it to. The more they do this and the more they come after people that are speaking the truth, it's going to give more ammo for the public. And it's going to make this story, you know, even bigger than it is. And it's going to go more viral than it is. So I really hope that they don't try to do that. Um, not only do the people not deserve it that are getting this flack like Lou, but it's, it's not going to go away if they try to take down someone that we hold so dear and that's done so much for the subject. Um, so I'm just, I'm expecting a big fight on our hands right now. And I think, but at the same time, all the forward progress is amazing. And it, it keeps getting better and better every year. And I, I, it's just really great. And since 2017, it's just everything has worked, it seems like. And it hasn't been like one line. We've been all over the place. We've been doing our best. Um, everyone's doing what they can in their own ways, but it's worked. And I think we need to feel good about that. And we're ready to fight. Ryan? Well, you know, it's wonderful to have all these new allies in, in terms of, of, of pushing for UFO transparency, because for the longest time, Frankly, journalists would would not touch this topic with a ten foot pole. It, it, the, the rare times that the media would cover it, they 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 begin it with like X Files music in the background and they ridicule it. But now we we see that the tides are shifting and we have all these wonderful and very competent journalists realizing that the government has not been truthful about UFOs. And when they said they stopped studying UFOs with a close of project. Blue Book in 1969. Now we know that that's a lie. Now, George, you've been covering this for a very long time. You you have been doing this for decades, and 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 you should you deserve endless credit for that. But now other people are starting to see the light. Something you've saw decades ago, and they're getting on team 
government, you've got to be transparent about this because we have a right to know, hello, government, you serve the people. The people do not serve you. We are the taxpayers. There might be multiple UFO programs that have been ongoing for decades that our taxpayer dollars have been contributing to, and yet simultaneously the government's lying to us and telling this is not real, and yet they're studying it in little pockets of the government. I mean, it's absolute madness and madness comes to an end. And, and George, you've been studying, you've been around and, and, and cognizant of this. And you said yourself, like you never thought this would happen. You never thought that we would get to the place we are now. And you more than anyone is in a position to say that. So I would say that uh, for all UFO fans out there, it's looking good. And I think it's going to continue looking better and things are changing and excellent. That's all I got to say. Matt, do you want to take a, a minute and then Jeremy a minute and I'll, I'll wrap it up? I have to agree. Since 2017, this has been a wild ride. Uh, first hearing that the government was studying Skinwalker Ranch, a place that we'd been spending so much time at over the years and working so hard on, on gathering information on, all the way up to Fravor and Bob Lazar meeting in a hotel room. I mean, th these are things that you would never expected to see. And now this video that that's come out, plus the photos, it's and it's going to get better. So everyone should buckle up. Jeremy, take a minute. OK, um, I'm very encouraged that uh, mass and popular media, popular culture is embracing the question, how bold, how brave, how overdue. So that makes me really happy. Um, this is the time where you can have real influence by coming forward. So those of you that are coming forward to me or to George, which you're welcome to do, uh, I applaud you because this is a time when it, you can actually change something by coming forward. And apparently everybody knows how to get a hold of me now. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, we do have a, a right to know. Uh, we have a need to know. And we have a duty to find out what this UFO mystery is all about. I'll just say this, is that it is a really exciting time. I never thought I would see it coming. We're a lot closer than we've ever been before, but expect pushback. There's going to be some serious pushback. And the closer we get to the goodies, uh, the real goodies, not files, not just videos, but the good stuff, the worse it's going to be. Because the keepers of the secrets who've had this stuff for a long time are not going to want to give it up. Thank you guys all. Appreciate it. We'll do this again sometime. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.